I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to look at how to manage and delete automation data. Here's the track we're going to be working on. We've got four tracks, and it's the first one, the sequence part, which is the one which we're going to be focusing on the most within this project. Okay, some nice wonky delay on the end there. Okay, so I'm going to just solo this part and put a loop around it so we can hear it more clearly. Now, what I want to do at the moment, there was no automation on this part, but I want to bring it to life. It's a nice little sequence, but it's just sitting there and being a bit predictable at the moment. So I'm going to grab a few parameters and I'm going to automate them. And I'm going to start in RetroSynth. This is the instrument which is generating this part. Um, I'm using Logic Step Sequencer as well, but to actually change this sound, I'm going to need the parameters within the synthesizer. So here's the interface. And in particular, I'm going to be automating a couple of things. Firstly, the amount of envelope in the filter. We might also make some changes to the actual filter cutoff and resonance. And we're going to do these in different ways. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go into latch mode and I'm going to create a, um, an envelope shape within the filter section. Let's just do that first of all. Okay, so by doing that, I'm going to come back into read mode here now as well. And when I press A, what we have a chance to do is to see that automation line. Okay, so what's that doing? Well, what that's doing is to control the amount that the filter envelope here affects the brightness of the sound. In other words, the more envelope is fed into the cutoff point, the brighter it gets. So we actually hear that um, envelope working harder to control the tone of the sound. And this is the shape that I created. So firstly, what do I do if I want to adjust this in some way, edit this um, data so that it becomes, hmm, I don't know, different in some way. You can see that in particular, I didn't actually start creating any changes until, uh, well, nearly halfway through bar three. So what if I want to start a little brighter and actually have the level drop down before it climbs again? Well, of course, even though I've actually drawn this, I can edit it at any point. I can create a new point. Let's get the playhead out of the way for a moment. I can create a new point just by clicking anywhere on this line and simply dragging up to create a start point, which then creates the shape that I want. Equally, I could grab the pencil tool from the toolbar and I can completely redraw this shape altogether if I want to. So even though I've introduced this parameter, I can replace this with a new curve of my choice if I want to. So again, that's another way that I can edit automation data to create a new ramp altogether. Now that the automation line is open, if I come back into latch mode again, the advantage of it being open is that any further um, automation data that I introduce to this track, I'll actually see being added in real time. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to adjust resonance. Okay, now I like that shape. I'm not going to edit it. I like the way that that sounds. You can hear it gets a bit squelchy when the resonance gets a little bit higher. So this shape is fine. I've now got a second parameter. And what we can do is we can view those side by side by clicking this little arrow, which allows me to see both lanes of automation data together or side by side if I want to, and that's fine. I'm going to close that back down again for a moment. I'm going to add one more lane of automation data, this time for an effect. This time I've got the bit crusher, which is producing this kind of aliasy sound, a little bit retro. And I want to make a bit more of that by, well, we'll see. We get this slight distortion effect when I introduce this parameter called downsampling. Okay, so now it really breaks up and you can see that when it loops back round, uh, we're obviously back to the start. We can see the kind of more extreme effect that I've created there at the end. And of course, the great thing about automation data is I can just keep going, adding one parameter after another. 
fine. Except what if I decide that what I want to do now is to actually get rid of some of this automation data? What if I decide that it's gone too far? And actually, if we put this part back into context, I suspect that the end of this probably is a little bit too extreme. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit too much breakup. But the other thing that I'm actually noticing, and we can zoom in on this a little bit, is that the absence of any of the bit crusher really sort of happening until halfway through bar three sounds a bit weird to me. I don't like the fact that it's suddenly introduced. So this would be another perfect example of a time when what I could do would be to introduce a little bit of an edit to the bit crusher such as it is at the moment. And I could create a little change here by creating a new point dragging to the left. And that way we've got a sort of slightly higher default amount of bit crusher before anything else happens. But I definitely feel like it gets too extreme here towards the end. So again, I could draw that curve if I wanted to, fine. But if I actually want to throw away an individual lane of automation data, how do I do it? I want to make sure that I throw away the bit crusher effect without getting rid of the synth parameter automation changes that I've made already. So what I'm going to do as I'm going to come up to the mix option here and you can see that there's a drop down menu triggered by delete automation and there are a few options here including one where you should tread with extreme caution. Okay so the one that I actually want is the one right at the top. I want to delete the visible automation on the selected track. So this track is currently selected and the parameter that I want to get rid of is right in front of me. So this is the perfect tool for the task in front of me. I want to select that and all of that bit crusher data will disappear. Now, of course, if I come back to where I was a moment ago, here is my resonance data still as it was. And here is the cutoff by envelope data such as it was. So again, if I wanted to go through step by step and delete or modify or get rid of one individual lane of data, I can do that by coming up to mix into delete automation and uh, selecting delete visible automation on the selected track. Now, the next option would take me back to where we started at the beginning of this video, where there wasn't any automation. So in other words, what I can do is I can get rid of the automation on the selected track, but clearing all parameters that I've currently automated. So if you sort of go on a bit of an automation odyssey and suddenly think, actually, you know what? I liked it better when I, where I was at the very beginning of my project. That is going to be the task for you. And the only one that I'm going to draw your attention to here, which we also need to uh, really think about, is delete all track automation. Now, once in a blue moon, this is useful. If you suddenly discover that you've really gone crazy with automation, you started a project at the beginning of the day and it sounded pretty good, and then you decided to really add lots of automation, you don't like all of the changes that you've made across a number of tracks, that option is for you. But be really careful because that won't just take out automation data on the currently selected track, but on all subsequent tracks as well. So there you go, be warned. So within this video, what we've done is we've looked at a couple of ways of editing automation data. We've learned that we can move nodes, we can draw one node over a previous one in order to wipe out automation data either to the left or to the right of existing data. We've seen that we can use the pencil tool to create new curves and shapes uh, to any parameter that we've introduced already. And what we've begun to do here is just to begin to see that within the delete automation options, there are a number of tools available to us to allow us to just think carefully about which bits of automation data we want to be getting rid of.